Welcome to Irrational Gamer. There are two types of stealth-based video games. One, which requires the players to hide in the shadows, avoid lights, and scrape by. And the other, which requires the players to blend into the environment. Hitman 2 Silent Assassin tops in the second category. This was the second Hitman game I played. And as usual, the game did manage to get my eyeball properly. The levels are really tough and mind-boggling. But experienced players will have no problem getting through the normal and expert modes. But professional is a really hard one. Each stage would require more than one rendition to clear. The AI is brilliantly scripted and you can feel that they're everywhere. You can't control the environment like you did in Hitman 1, but this time scenario is really difficult. The player controls could be beefed up a little bit because you feel the game is slow at times. All in all, the game rocks and it offers chances for coming back and playing the game once again. Now here is a sequel that is bigger and better on virtually every level. The story is more developed and there are much more cutscenes. All are well done. There are more levels with greatly varied terrain and all sorts of obstacles. Each location that you travel to is a mini campaign of sorts with several missions that follow each other back to back. One of the locations, Japan, has you landing in a valley. Sneaking past well-protected checkpoints and sniper towers to a castle's gates. Then making your way past the gate in the next mission and finally in the third, taking out the head of an international crime syndicate in his castle. This high alpine fortress comes complete with patrolling guards, basements and a courtyard with a helicopter. I couldn't help but notice a parallel to one of my favorite movies of all time, where eagles dare. Better yet, just like in that classic action movie, there is nothing preventing you from starting a castle-wide shootout in one of the many corridors. Though, be careful, if your target escapes, you failed. Hitman 2 Silent Assassin is the most revolutionary, the most intense, deepest and thus the most successful game of the series. It corrects most of the mistakes that the first Hitman codename 47 had and adds a lot of successful features such as the diversity approach to complete the mission, the alert system that enables the enemy to notice you even after you change your clothes. In Hitman codename 47, as long as you change the cloth, you wouldn't be noticed by enemy. And these features shine through Hitman 3 contracts and Hitman 4 blood money as well. Therefore, this game is also the foundation of successful sequels, especially blood money. Plus, the visual effects are amazing back in 2002 and the music delivers more richer atmosphere to the game that it really makes the player get into the game, get into the world of 47. Unfortunately, Absolution somehow throws out some very essential features. The most important change to Hitman 2 is right there in its title, Silent Assassin. The first Hitman game did penalize you for killing civilians but otherwise, you could be as loud as you wanted. You could go for a more stealthy approach, but it was entirely for your own gratification. The game doesn't care if you kill just your target or every hostile guard along the way. And in most instances, being super stealthy would just make things much harder for yourself. Hitman 2 Silent Assassin also added an option for a non-lethal takedown, which you would think make the silent approach much easier. But in practice, it hinders more than it helps. Unlike in the recent Hitman trilogy, here 
anesthetized guards will eventually wake up and when they do you are in trouble because they will somehow know where you are for instance whoever said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result clearly never played silent assassin which is less about trial and error as it is trial and the same trial again but this time maybe it will work the main culprit here is the suspicious meter which was another new feature for silent assassin the nicest thing i can say about it is that i can see what io were trying to do 47's disguise aren't perfect he's still a bald guy with a barcode on the back of his head so the possibility of being rumbled does add some tension to a level i find it difficult to review this game when i started playing it i got caught from the very beginning by the attention to details on almost everything some settings mostly in russia and japan are imprinted in my mind as realistic and gorgeous they were game plot is really nice and intriguing god's ai feels far far more human than the first entry of the series and sniping is not easy anymore because now you have breathe simulation while aiming game graphics is top notch for a 2002 game music is extremely good too not to mention that is also 100% fitting and also composed by akira yamoka the same music composer from the first hitman game another interesting addition that silent assassin has is your performance evaluation for the assignment that you have just completed unlike the first where you received a paycheck which was only deducted from if you killed cops and civilians here you are evaluated on stealth and aggression this is a much funner system since the first game many players inevitably saw the bug that when you have accumulated money by the game's little levels you could essentially kill without remorse some levels didn't even have civilians or cops so you could turn them into your own killing ground like squadsnager did at the end of commando technically there is nothing stopping you here from doing that but if you want the prized silent assassin rating and the bonus weapons that come with it you'll have to be discreet ironically when awarded the silent assassin bonus weapons that come in the shape of assault rifles and generally better guns you can't really use them to get the rating on later levels and there is no option to replay levels that you have completed thus your new weapons end up being strictly for show though they do come in handy on one particular level i'll leave that for you to figure out yet another change from the original is the option to switch from third person view to first person invaluable in aiming and the ability to save mid level there are three difficulty settings on the hardest of which you have no mid level saves unless you are awarded them for tasks completed and on the easiest you have plenty so beginners of the series might find this a more pleasant experience than the first game and experts will be pleased with the fact that silent assassin is much longer with at least twice as many missions then the first and cool little features such as being able to use a golf club as a weapon and the ability to peek through keyholes though it's a shame the mini gun from the first game is strangely absent from this one but that doesn't matter because the bigger weapon selection makes up for it if hitman was engrossing with its premise and gameplay then hitman 2 silent assassin is dangerously addictive better in almost every way 
I decided to go back and replay this little to refresh my skills and walked away fairly satisfied with the gameplay and graphics. The thing Hitman does so well is make you feel like the ultimate badass contract killer, yet it's not the kind of game that you should go in with guns blazing, although you can do that, but with strategic planning and a quiet, slow pace. It seems strange that so many noisy firearms are up for grabs only in the final level. You are encouraged to blow away bad guys, Max Payne style, yet by then the thoughtless shootout is welcomed since throughout the entire game you have to mix brain power with firepower. That in itself is not for everyone but it's the goal of the game. Besides. Walking into a highly inhabited area, killing the mark and then strolling away as if nothing ever happened is much more satisfying than just to kill everything in sight. It makes you feel much more professional, after all, you are playing the role of a hitman. The AI is a little too unforgiving, making this unplayable for more casual gamers. The night vision goggles seriously impairs your vision by making you see through a cone. Splinter Cell did this much cooler and easier way, given it was essential to that game. This game was so great. The graphics are top notch and the guns are pretty darn realistic. Each level has so much detail and there are so many different ways to complete each level. This game really shows you the life of a hitman, the quick thinking, stealth, smarts, the gun skills and the takeout missions. Unlike many games, the AI is very intelligent even on the easy level setting. I play on professional and wow, it's so difficult. Also, this game is pretty creepy mostly due to the music. Like the last level, when I first played this game. The music made my palms sweaty and my heart was pounding out of my chest. Simply put, this game is outstanding. The graphics are top class. The physics engine rivals that of Unreal Tournament 2003 and the gameplay is one of the most amazing things I have come across in a video game in a long, long time. Each level is brilliantly designed. And the fact that each mission has numerous ways of completion really helps create a non-linear feel to the whole thing. Not to mention, making this a game you can replay over and over again. One key theme to this game is the whole silent assassin thing. So be prepared to spend a lot of time waiting for that perfect moment to make your move. Of course. You can just run and gun your way through the levels, but you'd be missing out on something that makes this game truly unique. Nothing beats the feel of stalking in the shadows, picking your moment carefully and when the time's right, strike with the utmost precision. And where if you don't watch your step, it could all be over. The game is so close to reality, if you try to run too much. When in a disguise, say goodbye to your silent assassin rating. I like how the disguise system works in this one rather than the later games from Blood Money onwards. What made this game special is disguise system and the suspicious meter. The AI though still forgets about anything bad happened and move on with their routine work. The ragdolls, unfortunately, in the entire Hitman series, are the only downside to Hitman games. An easy 9 out of 10. You need to get this game, just to let you realize how good this game is. When I completed the last mission, I felt sad because it was finished. And I wanted more and more. Anyway, if you are up for a challenge. Play this game now, more people need to play this amazing game. Strongly suggested to anyone, a must have. Well, 
There you have it, my review of the game. It is very good, but takes patience. Lots of it. If you like today's video, make sure you subscribe to Rational Gamer.